Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how you can use my free 3D knitted t-shirt mock-up inside Blender so that you can create your own mock-up animations. To get started, you want to head to my Gumroad page, which is brockcreative.gumroad.com and I'll have a direct link in the description for this as well. And once you've arrived there, you want to look for the knitted mock-up product. And in order to get this for free, you just want to enter $0 in this little box down here. You can leave a small donation to support the channel if you wish as well. And once you've downloaded the file, you'll have everything you need right here to get started. And to get started, we're just going to open up this Blender project right here. And this is what we are presented when we open up our Blender project. If we have a scrub through our timeline, we can see our mock-up spinning as well as the threads going up, but it doesn't look like this is animating and we can't really see a design just yet. So in order to fix that, we're going to go to the top right of our viewport and look for the viewport shading. This is the rendered preview. So we'll click on this and now we can see our example design and it looks like our mock-up is properly animating now. Now, if we scroll through our timeline, you'll see that this plays extremely slow, but this is because we have our settings up pretty high. So if we click on our mock-up and then we go to our modifiers properties, we'll see our geometry nodes set up right here. And this is essentially what houses our knitting animation. If you take a look at the density, which is essentially how many different threads there are, that number is pretty high. So if we take this down to something like, maybe let's try a thousand, you'll see when we scrub through, it is now playing a lot quicker, but the effect isn't really there. Maybe we'll see what this looks like at 10,000. A little bit slower, a little more threads, but it just doesn't look right. So we're going to take this back up to the number we had it at before, which is 100,000. And in my eyes, this just looks a whole lot better. Now there is a whole bunch of customization options provided as well, like the size of the threads, the length of the threads, etc. But if you want the same look that I have, I would recommend that you just leave this as is. So whilst we can see the example design, this isn't what we're here for. We want to be placing our own design. So we're going to get outside of Blender just for a moment and back into our downloads. And this is where we want to open up our Photoshop template. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, don't stress. I have also provided a guidelines template right here for free, which is essentially the same thing. For those who do have Photoshop, let's open up our template. And once we open up our template, we have our guidelines right here. If you're familiar with the process from our previous videos, you can just skip forward for this part. If you're not, I'm going to show you how we can get our designs made. So we have two different layers here. We have our guidelines, which shows where we can place our designs, left sleeve, right sleeve, front of the shirt, back of the shirt, etc. And then the second layer is the shirt color. So if we change this to red, for example, our t-shirt is going to be red. And the same goes for any other color that you wish. For me, I'm just going to leave this as pure black and then we're just going to click OK. Now, similar to my other mock-ups, I already have a design prepared, which I'm going to drag into our project. So here's our template here. If we place this above our guidelines, we can start to see it and we're just going to position this where we want it. And once we're happy with where we've placed our designs, we can turn our guidelines off. If we want to keep our background color to color it is, we will leave it alone. If you want to change it, this is the point in time where you should change it before you save. But we're going to leave this as pure black. Actually, we might make this a little bit gray. Cool. We'll hit OK. And now we want to save this. So you have one of two options. You can either save this Photoshop template as it is and then use that, or we can save this as an image. For me, I'm just going to do a quick export as a PNG and we're going to call this Brock Design. Hit save. And now we'll go back into our Blender project. And within our Blender project, we have this shading tab open so that you can have quick access to changing over your designs. And as you can see right here, we have our example design. We're just gonna close this off. We no longer wanna see it and we wanna open up our own design. So inside the folder that you have saved your own design, we're gonna click on it. I called mine Brock Design. We're gonna click open image. And now if we do a quick scrub through again, we can see the back of our design and our knitting animation. So if we are happy with how this looks, we are ready to get on to the next step, which is rendering our animation. But before we dive into rendering, we want to make sure that we have our settings optimized. So we're going to head to edit and then under preferences and see what we have. And under cycles render devices, we're just going to click optics as I'm running a RTX 4090 GPU. If you have your CPU as well, make sure this is deselected. We don't want to be using this at the same time because it actually slows down your renders. All right, for now, there is nothing else to touch inside our preferences. We're going to close that down. And next we want to head to our render properties, making sure our device is set to GPU compute. If you don't have one and it is grayed out, it's 
it's likely you're gonna have to use a CPU and this will be a little bit slower for you. Next, we'll go to our output properties and here's where we're gonna select where we want to save our rendered animation. So under output, we're gonna click our folder icon and we're just gonna select our location for where we want to save our rendered frames. And we'll just call ours Brock animation. Hit accept. Now I have my file format set to EXR, but you can change this if you wish. Now this is automatically set to render out as a transparent animation, so I leave mine at EXR, but you can also use PNG, TIFF, or if you really wish, you can export it out as a video, but I do not recommend that. So if I set this to PNG, I just wanna make sure that I have this set to RGBA, which retains the alpha information, which is the transparency. We don't want any compression, so we're gonna turn this to zero. And now we are completely finished, ready to render our animation. We will head to the top left and click render animation. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you smash the like button, subscribe for more mockups. And if you want your say on what is released next, comment below what mockup should I drop next? I'll see you guys in the next one.